regreso aquí en Alto 060 y vamos a hablar ahora de las nuevas pruebas de impacto que hace el Instituto de Aseguradoras. We're going to switch uh, back to English because we're talking with uh, David Subi. He's the Chief Research Officer for the Institute of Insurance and Highway Safety. How are you, David? I'm good today. How are you, Javier? Thank you very much. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, very impressive results in the in this new test uh, for small cars. Uh, very impressive. Can you... Uh, Explain first a little bit how is this test done because this is pretty recent, right? Uh, you started doing it, I believe, next last year. Right. This is a new crash test from our organization. We started um, these tests last year, um, and it consists of running a vehicle at 40 miles an hour into a rigid barrier with only a small sliver of the front end hitting the barrier. Um, this represents uh, serious crashes that occur out there on the roads, and we're trying to um, improve. Uh, vehicle designs uh, to do better job at protecting people. And uh, what uh, what uh, uh, produced the change into doing like the, a full frontal impact to this side side uh, frontal impact? So, <clears throat> very few um, frontal crashes out in the, on real roads involve a completely full uh, frontal impact. Most of them uh, include some degree of overlap or offset. Um, this t test is uh, an extreme level of offset and um, it's based on research that we did that showed even though cars do a good job of protecting people in full overlap crashes and moderate overlap crashes they're not doing such a good job of protecting people in the small overlap yeah and these replicate something that would happen if you for example uh, hit a tree or a pole or some a utility pole or something like that right Yeah, it could represent hitting a tree or a pole or another vehicle. Um, one way to think about these crashes is their frontal crashes that almost didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> because if one driver had moved a little bit uh, yeah. more to one side or the other, um, there would be a miss. And we're talking about uh, a, a, an impact at a speed of 40 miles per hour, which for, for some people might not sound like a lot, but it, it causes a lot of damage to the car and to the people inside the car, right? That's correct. 40 miles an hour is a quite severe crash. Um, you know, we drive on the on roads at higher speeds than that. Uh, but by the time uh, vehicles impact each other or impact trees, uh, they're often going slower than the speed they were traveling before the crash. Okay, great. So uh, let's go into the details of the latest study. And uh, I guess the Honda Civic is the, got pretty good results. Yep, Honda Civic is the best performer in this group. Um, both the two-door and four-door variants earned a rating of good, which is the highest rating we assign. And that's, uh, yeah. that's only in this test, or that's like consistent of the other tests, like frontal, side, rear impact? Or this is only uh, concerning this uh, side impact test? Okay, so um, it, it's good in this new small overlap frontal crash test, but it's also good in our older moderate overlap crash test, our side impact crash test, our roof strength test, and our rear crash test. And as a result of being good in all of those tests, Uh, the Honda Civic is one of our top safety pick plus vehicles. Yeah, and uh, you said you start doing this uh, kind of test uh, a year ago, and uh, you, this is like, I believe, the fourth uh, group of cars that you have tested? Right, this is the fourth group. We started with mid-sized luxury cars, uh, things like Volvo S60 and BMW 3 Series. Then we did um, less expensive mid-sized cars. Then we moved to small SUVs like Honda CRVs and so forth, and now um, we're testing the small car segment. Yeah, okay. And uh, in this small car segment, uh, I see the Honda Civic, and then uh, there are mentions also to the Dodge Dart, the new Ford Focus, the Hyundai Elantra, and the Scion TC. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on the results on those vehicles, please? Correct. In the um, small overlap crash test, the four vehicles you just named, the Dart, the Focus, the Elantra, and the TC, um, aren't quite as good as the Honda, but um, they have equally good results in our older tests. And so they also are named Top Safety Pick Pluses and uh, cars that we would recommend people who are interested in a safe car uh, take a look at. Yeah, and can you elaborate a little bit in the difference, like why they're not so good in this uh, particular test? Um, in some cases, we've got uh, indication of uh, injury risk based on measurements in the dummy in these vehicles. In other cases, uh, we see that seat belts or airbags not quite doing um, optimal job of protecting the occupants. Um, in some cases, the, the dummy slides off the airbag, you know, which could happen to a human being, um, or the seatbelt allows a little bit too much play, um, and the dummy gets close to structures that could hurt it. So um, they're um, doing pretty good, but not as good as the Honda because of these uh, little problems. Yeah. And then also the Kia Forte, I guess they didn't get uh, very good ratings, right? 
Yeah, unfortunately, the brand new Kia Forte um, is the worst rated vehicle among this group. Um, its structure collapsed and we had a lot of problems with the seatbelts and airbags and we measured high forces on both the dummy's legs. Uh, so it doesn't measure up um, in this in, uh, you know, against the other vehicles in this group. And those uh, were the, the potential of the replication of the injuries, like basically the legs or some other parts of the dummy? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are indication of leg injuries and uh, indication of a head injury. Um, so uh, in addition to the fact that the structure just doesn't hold up, um, you know, we, the dummy is, is feeling the um, inadequacies of the vehicle as well. Yeah, we're talking to David Subi. He is the chief research officer at the Institute of Insurance and Highway Safety. And uh, David, can we uh, talk a little bit about the dummy? Because I mean, like uh, the the tests have changed. Uh, what about the dummy? The dummies have changed also. I mean, like uh, does this stay into account? For example, the the size of the average driver in the states. What about male, female, child, and all those things? So. Um The dummy that we're using these tests represents an average size uh, male adult. Um, now, he was developed back when the average size male adult wasn't quite as uh, heavy as we are today. Um, but he's still um, pretty good representation of, you know, the sort of middle of the population. Um, there are other tests that we do, like our side impact test uses a uh, small female dummy. So we are covering a range of um, occupant sizes when we do these tests. Um, but uh, there, there haven't been big changes in the shapes or size of the dummies to reflect the changing population. And what is the, the average size of the, the population? I mean, what, what is it's been used for this? So this dummy is about five foot, 10 inches tall and weighs about 170 pounds. Um, I believe the average uh, American is a little bit taller and a little bit heavier than that. <clears throat> yeah. And um, do you have uh, oversized dummies for, for other kind of tests? We do have uh, oversized dummies for other types of tests. Um, but in this case, we chose to use the average size one. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the results of uh, these uh, this the compact segment cars. Uh, the Chevy, uh, Chevrolet Sonic uh, had uh, some mixed results, I guess. Yeah, the Chevrolet Sonic um, rates marginal overall, uh, and it's got a pretty good structure, but um, we saw some uh, serious indications that the um, seatbelts and airbags weren't quite doing a good job of protecting people in this type of crash, and we also had a fairly high risk of leg injuries measured. Yeah. Um, so how many cars did you test it, uh, for this segment? I mean, is this like a one, one shot thing when you, when you crash the cars? Because I mean, you, you guys buy the cars, right? I mean, uh, you only have like one shot of, of doing the test and getting it right. That's correct. Um, we buy all of these cars at, uh, local dealerships, just like, uh, people do when they go out to buy a new car and, um, we do one test. And so, Running the test correctly and precisely is, is, is an important part of the, the work we do. Um, we haven't tested the entire small car segment here, but um, we've hit the most popular models from each automaker. And uh, sometime in the future, we'll round out that group with uh, some more tests of small cars. Yeah. So the I Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, uh, can you explain a little bit the, what is this exactly? I mean, this is a group of uh, an independent group, a nonprofit organization, right? Yes, Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is independent and nonprofit. Um, we get our funding from insurance companies. Um, our sponsors are interested in making the world a safer place, and um, one of the things they do uh, to help that is fund the research that we do um, in terms of making vehicles safer, trying to make roads safer, and pass laws that keep us all safe. And the manufacturers actually pay a lot of attention to your tests because they actually do their own tests, I believe, and like... When you come up with your own results, they, in some cases, or maybe in all the cases when, when, when it's possible for them, I guess, they modify the, the way they, they build cars, right? And they adapt new technologies and new features in the cars to make them safer after your results. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. Um, we're, we're talking with the automakers all the time as we develop new tests. So they know what we think the, the new problems out there on the roads are. And, um, you know, manufacturers are looking for solutions to those problems. Um, some manufacturers like, Honda and Chrysler and Ford and Hyundai, with their Elantra in this case, are, are ahead of um, their competitors. Uh, but all the manufacturers have told us that they're working on solutions to this problem, and we expect to see um, 
the results of these tests get better with time. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, uh, David Suvi. He's the Chief Research uh, Officer for the Institute of uh, Insurance and Highway Safety. Uh, and there's a internet page, a web page, where people can look at these results. Is this yep, public information? Find, yeah, you can find our results at www.iihs.org. Excellent. Thank you very much, David. And uh, we'll, uh, of course, uh, people should drive safely despite of uh, the car that they're driving. And some are better than others, but like the main factor is still the human being, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much for allowing us the opportunity to talk about our results with your audience. Thank you very much. Right, Ese bye era bye. David Subi, es el jefe de investigación del Instituto de Aseguradoras y Seguridad en las Carreteras que han probado eh, en la cuarta ronda de pruebas en vehículos compactos con el, la nueva prueba que hacen del impacto frontal, pero parcial. Solamente el 25% de la parte frontal del vehículo impacta una barrera de cinco pies es una barrera sólida que representa eh, lo que sucedería cuando se impacta, digamos, un árbol o un poste de la electricidad y eh, según los resultados que han visto ellos, según las estadísticas que han visto en sus resultados, esta es la mayoría de los accidentes que casi no pasan, pero que son pueden ser fatales. Así que eh, revisen la página iihs.org para que vean todos los resultados. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y regresamos más en esta edición. 